I feel honored to be part of the QOI City 6th and thank Dr. al -Amri and Dr. Ibrahim for the kind invitation and my dear friend Dr. Adib Mogaddam of UCO. I am representing, in fact, a big group of engineering scientists and clinicians of ARAS Robotics. Uh, surgical training has always been a challenge and there is a transformative shift from an apprenticeship approach towards a uh, modern competency-based one. The comparison has been provided to the right of the slide. Uh, but there are a lot of uh, opportunities for training now other than the operating room and uh, most uh, recent one is simulation uh, which incorporates a virtual reality in terms of visual and more recently the haptic feedback which in fact is the major focus of my presentation. Vitrectomy is probably the most sophisticated uh, ocular procedure or even probably in the whole medicine. It involves a variety uh, of the skills and procedures and the ones in, uh, in orange or yellow are the steps and procedures that are done in a closed fashion, in a closed eye uh, setting. This closed eye setting in, in a realm of surgery is called minimally invasive surgery, uh, and of which vitrectomy and phaco are the prototypical uh, procedures that are conducted in a minimally invasive surgery fashion. Uh, the uh, well, other alternative uh, terminologies are endoscopic procedures closed versus open sky procedures and you see to the left bottom the sophisticated uh, setting which provides uh, the uh, exceptional access uh, to a very delicate organ that is retina a preview is just uh, could can could be seen to the right of the slide Surgical training, as I just mentioned, has always been a challenge and quite uh, the opposite to the epigram of see one, do one and teach one. It's a major, major challenge on the part of the teacher and the learner. Both it has lots of professional, ethical uh, and educational uh, dilemmas and challenges. And we, we are well, very well uh, acquainted with the concept of learning curve in FACO and vitrectomy, for instance. And there, I mean, there is a huge uh, path ahead of, I mean, a long path ahead of the training uh, to reach to the state that is acceptable in terms of the complications and um, independent surgery. This is a conceptual framework which shows us uh, the um, relation between surgery, robotics, uh, some engineering concepts and uh, training, su surgical training. Uh, at least we can say the robot scan uh, um, has two uh, category of applications in surgery. One is uh, assisting in the very process of surgery and the other one is assistance in the process of teaching surgery. Uh, I just want to uh, have your attention to the RCM that is remote center motion. This is a, an engineering equivalent engineering uh, concept uh, with 
MIS, Minimal Invasive Surgery. It refers to the point of entry into the eye for a fake or handpiece uh, or entrance of the retractor to the posterior segment. The entrance point acts like a fulcrum uh, which de that, that, that the device is actually turns around it. And this is a major design and development challenge for uh, from a hardware or software perspective uh, in, uh, in, by the engineering scientists. Here you see uh, precise that is the very well-known telerobotic system in ophthalmology which uh, performed the first uh, inhuman uh, vitrectomy procedure in I guess in 2017 or 2016 uh, and you see that uh, the surgeon uh, has a control handle but does not perform the real I mean directly the surgery but the uh, slave robot actually performs the surgery you still can see here uh, the a momentous uh, time of uh, entering into the eye and to the right button you see how it performs epiretinal membrane peeling of course it is led and directed by the surgeon but the surgeon as I just mentioned does not directly do the surgery this is robotic assisted uh, but our concept refers to uh, our concept uh, focuses on the training process the concept is depicted in this picture and uh, summarized as dual user cooperative operation by bilateral haptic feedback on switchable modes by two identical consoles of RH assist that you can see. It is detailed here. Uh, it has two modes the trainer operation mode and the trainee operation mode and you see the hand force is reflected to the hand of the other person uh, while watching uh, the uh, control is asymmetrical I mean uh, that's that it means that the trainer in the trainee mode the trainer has a uh, dominance uh, uh, feature and it can take over the task authority uh, for the sake of safety, of course. So in addition to visual feedback in virtual reality, the RS Assist provide a haptic feedback, the touch feedback, and uh, expands the, uh, augments the virtual reality experience during training. You can see that its performance in the lab, in a robotic lab, and also in the skill lab, uh, in the two different training trainer modes, uh, the surgery is being, I mean, uh, simulation on the right is done on a cadaver eye, and you see that the uh, the other arm. Uh, performs the very, follows the very uh, process that just done in the first uh, section of the, f the video uh, by the surgeon or by the, uh, could be the trainee or the trainer surgeon, uh, any of them. Some of the resources are provided in the bottom of the slide. A virtual reality, in conclusion, has uh, as indispensable role in uh, competence-based surgery training and learning. I mean, um, from every perspective, from a surge, from the trainee or the, from the trainer perspective. And vitrectomy is a very sophisticated, minimal invasive surgery, uh, and a huge training challenge is a very good one to be. Um, facilitator through virtual reality.
and our RS Assist robotic system with switchable haptic feedback uh, can provide a real cooperative surgery, not in the um, I mean, skill lab, but in the real operating room in a very safe uh, environment can facilitate the vitrectomy learning and teaching. Thank you very much for your attention.